uh, we have seen uh, in casting metallurgy we have seen solidification of pure metals uh, we have also seen solidification of alloys and how does the two solidification mechanisms how do they differ so the major difference which we saw was that uh, the pure metals uh, they solidify at a particular temperature but uh, alloys they solidify over a range of temperature so now there are different alloy systems are there so uh, we'll uh, see few of them so we'll start off with the very basic form of alloy system which is called as isomorphous alloys so isomorphous alloys are made up of two elements which are completely soluble in each other at all compositions both in liquid as well as solid state so common example of an isomorphous alloy system is copper nickel and uh, gold and silver so here i have written copper nickel and uh, gold silver system so there are different conditions uh, which dictates whether two elements will form an isomorphous alloy system or not um, uh, that is part of the solid solution theory which is not part of it i don't want to get into it maybe you can read it up in calister it is there so the phase diagram uh, for the uh, phase diagram which you saw in the previous video that is for an isomorphous uh, alloy system uh, which we saw previously while discussing the solidification mechanism of alloys so the point is isomorphous alloys both the elements uh, they are soluble in each other completely soluble in each other at all compositions so see this diagram it has a copper and nickel copper nickel uh, alloy isomorphous alloy system and a binary uh, diagram is there so you can see uh, this is the liquidus line above it everything is liquid so liquid uh, both the elements are completely soluble and this is the solidus line below solidus everything is solid so uh, in solid state also copper and nickel they are completely soluble of course the difference between uh, by looking at a phase diagram how can you say that it is completely soluble this will understand later uh, next video when we see the eutectic system then we'll understand why we are saying that this particular diagram is for completely soluble and some other diagram is uh, not completely soluble we'll see it later so isomorphous alloy system will consider two cases first is with equilibrium cooling and second case will be with non equilibrium cooling so this was the phase diagram which we want to analyze and we have taken a particular portion of this phase diagram right so this particular portion we have taken and that we are studying in detail so we are considering the case of equilibrium cooling the composition which we have chosen for studying the solidification characteristic we have chosen 35 weight percentage of nickel so as you know this is a solid solution so in this solid solution uh, uh, this is a copper nickel solution so some element will be in majority some element will be in minority so suppose copper is in majority and nickel is in minority so the elements which are in the uh, element which is in majority we call it as a solvent and the element which is in minority we call it as solute so this is a 35% uh, of nickel which is the solute and 65% of copper and alpha phase we are saying alpha phase is the alloy which will solidify in the end means below solidus line whatever we are getting we'll get only single phase because it is completely soluble so we'll we'll be getting alpha phase so we are considering a particular case where 35% of nickel is there so x axis is the composition axis and y axis is the temperature phase diagram we have seen previously also so 35% composition we are studying at point a 1300 degree celsius it is completely liquid and 35% of nickel and rest is copper so 65% copper then as uh, the cooling progresses it reaches uh, location b point b so point b uh, Uh, it is the liquidus line so at liquidus line the alpha crystal starts forming so here we have seen schematically it is shown the alpha crystals uh, are shown over here so the composition of this alpha can be find out by drawing a horizontal line we call it as a tie line so from point b you drop a horizontal line so this horizontal line wherever it touches or wherever it crosses the solidus it gives the solid concentration and wherever it crosses the liquidus it gives the liquid concentration so at point b Uh, we draw horizontal line it is crossing the solidus at 46 percentage of nickel so the alpha phase which is forming here that will be having 46 weight percentage of nickel and rest will be copper similarly you drop a draw a line horizontal line which should uh, cross the liquidus but point b itself is on liquidus so you don't have to uh, look further you can just straight away say that liquid is having 35 percentage of nickel and 65 percentage of copper now with further cooling from point b to point c again we have uh, come down so from point c the alpha crystals which were forming they will grow in size again you drop a horizontal line so solid composition will be 43% nickel 
the alpha phase will be 43% nickel and 57% copper. Similarly, liquid phase you can find out from here. So uh, at point C, when the solidification has progressed, point C will drop a horizontal line. Wherever it is uh, crossing the solidus, we will find out the composition of the solid, we will find out the composition of the alpha phase, which is 43% nickel, 57% uh, copper. And wherever it is crossing the liquidus, we will find out the composition of the liquid. Then uh, uh, liquid, uh, you should remember that uh, alloy solidifies through a mushy zone, it is a combination of solid and liquid. So the composition of solid and composition of liquid will find out from the solid slide and the liquid slide. Then you further cool it down, point D is reached which is the, the solidus, uh, solidus point. <coughs> At point D we find out the composition of alpha phase. So straight away you can say because uh, at this point itself uh, it is the crossing the solidus. So point alpha phase is 35% nickel, 65% copper and wherever it is crossing the liquidus we find out the liquid composition. Uh, at this point, at point D, uh, the solidification is virtually complete, it means it is almost completed. So upon crossing the solidus line, whatever liquid was left, at point D, whatever little liquid was left, it will again uh, solidify and the copper from it, uh, sorry, the nickel from it will diffuse uh, into the alpha crystals and finally will end up uh, with a complete solid having 35% of nickel and 65% of copper. This type of solidification is possible only if it is equilibrium cooling, means the cooling is sufficiently slow so that uh, complete chances of diffusion are there. Next we will take up the case of non-equilibrium cooling, same alloy system, copper nickel alloy, uh, y axis is temperature, x axis is the composition uh, uh, and uh, we will see the case of non-equilibrium cooling. So all practical cooling, the cooling rates are much faster as I have uh, told you previously also. So the atoms which are uh, uh, solidifying, uh, the elements which are solidifying, they do not get a chance to diffuse properly. So it results into something, we will see what happens to it. So again we are starting from point A dash, we are calling it A dash because previously we called it as A, so just a distinction. So at A dash, temperature is 1300 degrees Celsius, everything is liquid, composition is 35 percentage of nickel, 65 percentage of copper. Again we have considered 35 percent weight percentage of nickel, same location as previous. Uh, we are considering but non-equilibrium cooling. So point A dash temperature is 1300 degrees Celsius, everything is liquid, you uh, cool it down, you reach the liquidus point, at liquidus point the first crystals will start forming, so again uh, alpha phases start forming, then you drop a horizontal line wherever it is crossing the solidus you find out the composition, so 46 percentage of nickel and rest is copper as can be seen from here and composition of liquid you find out from the uh, intersection of horizontal line and the liquidus line which is point B dash so we find out that composition. Now next here is the main distinction what happens in case of a practical cooling rate why it is so much uh, typical or so much important to study it. See from point B dash when the cooling is progressing it will come to point C dash somewhere inside the mushy zone. Now inside the mushy zone from point C dash you drop a horizontal line, wherever the horizontal line is crossing the liquidus that will give us the composition of liquid. So liquid composition straight away is crossing here then you uh, drop uh, perpendicular from here, this location you find out that the nickel composition is 29% and uh, rest is copper. So liquid composition finding out is not that much difficult. From the phase diagram, the alpha phase should have been 40 percentage of nickel and 60 percentage of copper as can be seen from the diagram. If you drop a horizontal line, it will cross the solidus at this location where the alpha phase uh, will be 40 percent nickel and 60 percent copper. This composition should be throughout the grain. But since it is a non-equilibrium cooling, since the cooling rates are very fast, therefore the nickel atoms, they do not get a chance to diffuse properly. So what happens is, the nickel atom which is uh, the alpha phase which started solidifying previously 46 percentage of nickel. Now if the temperature is dropped this nickel should diffuse throughout the grain and the percentage the composition of the grain should fall below like it should reduce. So from 46 percent it should have come straight away to 40 percent through diffusion but since it is a non-equilibrium cooling diffusion is not taking place properly. Uh, the very fast cooling rate diffusion is not happening properly. So this 46 percentage of nickel inside the grain, it does not get a chance to diffuse throughout the grain. What happens is the center is 46 percent nickel, but the outside, the outer nickel that is 40 percent. But as per the phase diagram, everything should have been 40 percent, it does not happen. Center remains at 46, the outside becomes 
40. So we take sort of an average and we are just saying that maybe 42% is forming. And uh, the alpha phase therefore will have 42% of nickel and 58% of copper. Premium cooling, uh, the center remains at higher concentration which, concent uh, which uh, solidified uh, at the liquidus, 46% nickel was present at the center that remains inside. At the outer periphery, the composition is 40%. So 40% composition should have been throughout, but that does not happen because from the center the nickel does not get a chance to diffuse out. So we take somewhere the average composition would be between 46% and 40%. So 40% is dictated from the phase diagram, 46% was the previous location. So the composition will be somewhere in between. For the sake of argument, as an assumption we have taken that the average composition is 42%. So 42%. What happens is this solidus line, it got shifted by some amount. So if, uh, as per phase diagram, the composition of the alpha phase should have been 40%. But now, since uh, the cooling rates are very fast, diffusion could not happen. So the composition of alpha becomes 42%. So 42% of nickel and rest is copper. This is, with the, uh, this is for the case of non-equilibrium cooling. Now, implication of this non-equilibrium solidification phenomena is that the solidus line has been shifted to higher nickel content. What happens because of this, we'll see. But uh, graphically, what has happened is the solidus line, it has shifted towards the right. Now, from point C dash, if we have come to point D dash, which is the intersection point with the solidus line. Here also, you can see alpha phase should have been 35% nickel and 65% copper throughout but it is only present at the outer periphery. Why? Because the nickel could not get a chance to diffuse properly. Since the cooling rates are very fast, nickel did not get a chance to diffuse. Therefore, uh, the outer phase is having 35% of nickel, but the overall alpha phase, the overall average is around 38%. So what happens is, there is a concentration gradient. The center of the grains are rich in the uh, higher melting point component so nickel copper system nickel is the higher melting component so the center is rich in nickel and as we go from center towards the outer edges it becomes uh, the nickel content become lesser and lesser and the copper becomes more and more so we have a gradient of concentration center is highly rich in nickel but the outer periphery is rich in copper Generally speaking, in case of an isomorphous alloy, the center is rich in high melting point element and the boundary is rich in low melting point element. So again, uh, D dash, we have seen alpha phase should have been 35% uh, nickel and 65% copper, but alpha phase ultimately becomes 38% nickel and 62% copper. Then if you cross, if you come below uh, point D dash, you enter point E dash, then again alpha phase should have been 31% nickel, 69% copper, but alpha phase is 35% nickel and 65% copper because the solidus line has shifted towards the right. So the degree of displacement of the non-equilibrium solidus curve from the equilibrium one will depend on the rate of cooling. So if the rate of cooling is very very high, then the solidus curve will shift further towards the right because the diffusion will be very very less and therefore the concentration gradients will shift towards the right the outer uh, the solidus line will try to shift towards the uh, nickel rich side right but if the cooling rates are very small so theoretically if the cooling rate is zero then we get the original solidus line if the cooling rate is very small the curve won't shift that much the curve will be nearby to the original cooling curve if the cooling rate is very high the curve will shift uh, too much so the concentration gradients are established across the grains the reason uh, reason i've told you previously Center of the grain is rich in high melting material which is nickel for copper nickel system. Nickel is not able to diffuse throughout the grain. So edges may become rich in the low melting element which is copper in this case. This is called coring. Problem with coring is you end up with an alloy the, uh, in which the grain boundaries are rich in low melting component. So at low temperature itself the alloy may start melting. From phase diagram, the phase diagram will tell that at a, for a particular composition this is the liquidus temperature, uh, this is the solidus temperature, that the melting will start at point T dash. But since the curve has shifted, since the solidus line has shifted towards the right, melting will start even at some temperature lower than D dash also. Because copper is low melting, at the boundary copper is present. So from solid, from the phase diagram, even if you are having an idea that, oh, okay, it will start melting at 1000 degrees Celsius, but that is possible if nickel could have diffused properly. 
since nickel did not diffuse at the boundary only copper is present so from phase diagram you are, you are thinking 1000 degrees celsius but it may start melting even before that it may result into failure some engineering failure may be there poor design so this is called as coring coring is a one of the major problems with the practical uh, cooling rate because of coring uh, maybe you can see this diagram on with fast rate of cooling we get a cored structure so center is uh, rich in high melting component uh, high melting element that is nickel and as we move from center to outside the nickel percentage it becomes lesser and it becomes rich in the lower melting component that it becomes rich in copper so the problem as i told you before it may melt before the prescribed temperature phase diagram will tell it will melt at a certain temperature but it, it will melt before that it does not into failure to address uh, to solve this coring issue we do a particular heat treatment process known as homogenizing you can look it up homogenizing what is meant by homogenizing it is not part of your syllabus even all these things are also not part of the syllabus but still to understand uh, how things solidify you should know this but heat treatment is not part of the uh, syllabus you can look it up if any doubts are there we'll see basically what happens is homogenizing we heat it to a particular temperature and hold it there for a longer duration so that the uh, uh, the nickel which could not diffuse earlier it can now get a chance to do and when it diffuses then we get a uniform structure throughout so this is how this is the solidification for isomorphous alloys next we'll see the solidification of binary eutectic alloys maybe within one or two days again i'll upload this video so if any doubts are there you have my contact details stay healthy stay safe